We was right into the heart of winter and we was at the Shaolin Temple with Master Sheng Yi. He was sat there talking. And as I looked around, everyone with their coats all wrapped up warm, they were all shaking and freezing. And Master just sat there in his chair, which he'd been sat in for hours. He seemed calm and he seemed warm, he seemed comfortable. And he seemed like he could go on forever, talking and talking, giving his wisdom out. And the stars were beautiful at the Shaolin Temple and everyone was kind of anticipating the end of the talk so that we could go inside to the warmth. Yet all of us would have happily sat there all night in the freezing cold to hear him talk because everything he says is just knowledge and incredible life advice and you, you want to sit around just so you could hear another word. So, he finishes up the talk and we go inside the Shaolin Temple. He goes off to help around the temple, help some of his disciples, and we begin setting up the next interview in the main hall of the temple. After a few minutes of setting up, we're almost ready to film, and he walks in with blankets and hot water bottles for people so that they may feel warm. And then he sits down, ready for the next talk. He gives his talk for another few hours, Everyone's tired at this point, yet Master seems very awake, calm, and Pimp's usual self. He seems all good. There seems to be no problem with him. So then, the next morning, we're up bright and early for filming, and he's out running with Loki, his dog. It's a beautiful day, actually. I think it's snowing. And then he disappears, and we speak to Xiao Shen, who explains to us that he's had to go for an emergency surgery as he's been in agony. We was all quite perplexed and confused because I wasn't aware he was in agony. When he returns, he apologizes to us for being lethargic and not talking very well because he had agony in his teeth and in his face. And he said this affected him, but no one was aware. He was his usual self, he was calm, he was composed. He spoke so eloquently, so incredibly as he always does. And actually you can watch that interview where he's in the main hall that we did last year. And you'll see, you were not aware that there's anything wrong. Welcome back to The Everyday Stoic. I'm William Mulligan. And today I'll be talking about my experience with Master Xi Heng Yi and the things I learned from him and the truth about him. Remember, as the Stoics say, memento mori. Our time is precious, our time is finite, don't waste a moment. Be grateful for the very moment you have, the very present moment you have. That little unfilled square on that calendar is all that we have. The black is the past, it's gone. And the white is the future. It hasn't happened yet and we don't know what will happen or if it will happen. So be present and enjoy the present and enjoy the video. Take care not to be Caesified or died in purple. It happens, so keep yourself simple, good, pure, serious, unpretentious, a friend of justice, God-fearing, kind, full of affection, strong for your proper work. Strive hard to remain the same man that philosophy wished to make you. Revere the gods, look after men. Life is short, the one harvest of existence on earth is a godly habit of mind and social action. So that is a quote from the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. And it brings me into my point that every time I visit the Shaolin Temple and I visit Master Shihengyi, when I return, people always ask me the same question. Is he legit? Is he real? What is it like looking behind that curtain when he's not on camera, when he's not doing his TEDx talks? What is he really like? Well. I can answer that and I think the answer might be quite surprising to many people. So in this video I'll explain things I learned from visiting him, things I've learned from him that have changed my life, and the truth about him, who he really is, what he's really like when the cameras aren't on, when people aren't around. Even what he's like when he's on his own, 
unaware that people are watching. From my own personal experience, when we arrived in 2021 at the Shaolin Temple, we arrive at the temple and it's quiet, firstly, there's no one around. And we're getting out of the car, ready to walk up, and Shi Heng Yi walks out of the front doors and greets all of us. Very kind, very welcoming. Um, he has this great aura around him that feels like he is conscious of every person there, aware of every person, and he is friendly to this awareness. He is kind to everyone. He makes everyone feel welcome. Everyone feel like they are equal to each another. So the way he turns up, and this has been every time we've met him, it reminds me of Gandalf in the first Lord of the Rings. He says, a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means. And it seems like that. You turn up and no one is there, it's quiet. And then he pops out of nowhere and he's ready for the day. The first day we arrived, and were welcomed into the temple. Personally for me, I'd always watched films and documentaries that revolve around Shaolin and monks, and it was a great interest of mine, a curious interest, and I was always worried it wasn't re real. Like, if I finally got the chance to go to a temple and look behind the curtain, I'd realise it's all fake and they're all pretending, and it's all a big show. So there was that worry at the back of my mind and we walk in and it's fulfilling my expectations. I don't try to hold expectations, but I would carried them since I was a kid. So everyone's so kind. We walk in and we sit down at this table and Sheng Yi begins pouring tea and in these little cups and everyone has tea and then you, you finish tea you put it down, as soon as you put it down, your tea is filled again. He fills your tea instantly. It's actually quite incredible. You drink a lot of tea when you're at the Shaolin Temple. That is one thing I learnt very quickly. And there's so much tea, very nice tea, oolong, sirlon, jasmine, black, white, yellow, red. So, my first impression is that he's very welcoming and he begins to talk around this table and he is talking for a very long time and everything that's coming out of his mouth is just pure wisdom. In my head I was just thinking why aren't we filming this? This is just incredible. Our viewers would love all these things he's saying and I was worried. I was like don't stop speaking you're gonna waste all this knowledge but I quickly learned that everything he says is just knowledge. He never stops. Any conversation you have with him is just full of wisdom. It reminds me of Master Ugwe, which sounds ridiculous, but everything is a lesson or wisdom in such a profound way. Even when he's just relaxed or joking, it's still everything that's coming out of his mouth is teaching you. You're learning from him. You're gaining this wisdom from him. So it's quite a pleasure to just sit and talk to him. So we sat at his table for a very long time. He's very calm. We drink way too much tea, but it's very nice. So we keep drinking. And once you finish it, he's poured another tea. So you can't say no once it's poured. And this is my first impression of him. But there is things people don't see of Master. Um, there is things that you will not see on the screen. You won't see it watching these videos. You probably won't even see it when you visit these temples because he does things that people don't see. So one of the things you don't see is that it is a working temple and he is at the head of this. He's working everything. He makes it run. You know, there's so much that goes into this temple and he does it all, but you don't see this. And when you're interacting with him, you're not aware of this. He seems so relaxed, like he doesn't have a care in the world or he doesn't have any responsibility. But we talk for a while, we have tea, and then we go to set up to do our first shoot with him. And we're bringing equipment in and out, which all the staff and disciples, everyone at the temple 
always offer to help. They always help, they're so kind and try their best to accommodate you in any way they can. But as you're going in and out of rooms, of equipment, you will notice that Master is there and he's working, he's helping, he's doing things that you're not aware that he does all these things. So one thing became very apparent is that Shi Heng Ye is one of the hardest workers I know and one of the toughest people I know. But you will not know this if you watch him. He seems very calm and relaxed and he seems like he doesn't work hard. He just walks around, you know, enjoying life, being present, talking to people, but he works incredibly, incredibly hard and he's incredibly, incredibly tough. And I wasn't aware of this and I later found out which became a very painful experience. So I did some training sessions with Shi Heng Ye and some of the disciples and some of the masters. And some of these training exercises are very painful. Like some, are, some of them are karate chopping solid bearings in bags, which is very painful when they compound after a while. Um, things like getting a metal rod or a wooden stick and hitting your shins hitting your forearm, hitting your back, hitting your body. Um, I remember I did one exercise with one of his disciples where you smash your forearms together and you keep doing it. It's very rhythmic and very painful. And I did this for a few minutes at a time and it was very painful. It left me with bruises, um, red arms, swollen legs. It's a very painful experience, but I did enjoy it. It's something I like. I like pushing myself in that way. But, where I've seen it as a challenge, I noticed that Shi Heng Yi and many of the disciples, it's just their way of life, it's their way of discipline, and they do it for hours. When I was doing it for a minute and my hand was swollen and in pain, they'll do that for hours, and it's one of the coolest sounds when you hear them, so rhythmic, all doing it together, hitting a wooden beam, and just hitting and hitting in this rhythm. The force in which he was hitting himself with these metal rods and the force he was hitting these structures with his body, with his forearm, with his shins, with his arms, it's incredible. You can feel the vibrations and you can feel the force in which they're hitting. And he never shows an ounce of pain. And I will say the most painful thing was actually the massages after. After I'd done all these things to my forearms, uh, Master started rolling out the I don't quite know, but he was, he was putting a lot of pressure on it and it was so incredibly painful, but afterwards it felt a lot better and the swelling had gone down. But it doesn't end there. When we'd done a whole day filming and we'd go off to do another shoot, we would, I'd be walking through the halls and you can just see through a crack in the door, you notice him either with some disciples or masters and he's teaching them some training methods or he's um, doing more discipline with them he's doing more punching or um, more voluntary discomfort you know there's one thing that i seen whilst i was there and he was doing with one of his disciples is a huge concrete rolling pin i mean this thing was so heavy um it was incredible incredibly heavy and they was rolling them out on their shins, putting so much force, and you could hear all the little imperfections in the shin bone just crunching and crunching, and they was enjoying themselves doing this. And I did it with like a wooden one, and that was painful as it is. So when people ask me, is he legit? Is he like he is on camera? I would say, and this is the truth, that he is more than that. What you see on camera is just one perspective of him, one part of his personality. It's actually quite a limited part. It's only the part that he's portraying for the camera so that he gets the wisdom across the best that he can. And he said that, he, he speaks in a certain way, he composes himself in a certain way so that his message gets heard better, uh, so that people can soak in this knowledge better. But when you're actually spending days with him, you realize that first of all, he does always speak like this and composes himself in this way, but he is super disciplined, super tough, 
incredibly hardworking and it just never stops. And he's always trying to teach people, he's always trying to help, he's always uh, pushing himself, disciplining himself, becoming a better version of himself. I don't want the video to go on too long, so I'd just say the three most important things I've learned from Master Xi Hengye, from my time spent with him. Number one, the thing I learned from Xi Hengye is be present. And it's, it is a Stoic principle, and I've learned that from the meditations very strongly. Like the Stoics say, momentum mori, remember that our time is limited, remember death, that we are mortal. And it's in this thought that we remind ourselves to be present in this moment. But Xi Heng Yi wasn't aware of Stoicism, he wasn't aware of the teachings of the Stoics, yet his understanding of these principles were very well thought out, he had a great understanding of these principles, and he seemed like a Stoic. So in every instance you're with him, you can tell he is present in that moment. He even said in my talk with him, that's on YouTube, is that we go to this talk and he wanted to set up tea, drink tea together during this talk because he wanted to make it an occasion. He wanted it just to be more than just talking. He wanted to be present so we can talk, enjoy tea that I requested. It was an oolong tea and he got this very nice oolong tea um, and we drank it whilst talking. And he said that he wanted to be present in that moment, this moment right here. Um, is the only moment we have. And he explained, because I asked him a question about Memento Mori, and he says that we don't know when death will arrive, we don't know what, if death is just behind that door. So just be present in life right now, be present, enjoy the moment we have right now. So that's the first lesson that I've taken away from him. So the second one is think before talking. And this is a very profound thing about his character that you definitely don't see on screen. And it's quite remarkable. It reminds me of some Hollywood character. I can't explain it. It's like if someone wrote a book around some wise sage, they would have wrote him. And the point is, first of all, think before speaking. If you ask him a question or you say something to him, he won't just blurt out a load of words. What he says will be very concise. And you'll notice this, he can speak for like three hours and he won't um or ah uh or step back on his words. Everything flows out as it should because he thinks before he speaks. But there's an interesting, like an intriguing dichotomy to his character where, and you notice it was when, when you spend enough time with him and you're at the temple, it can be a busy place sometimes. And a lot of the time, bear in mind he talks for hours, he loves to, he loves to give these lectures, he loves to talk and give all this wisdom. He actually is very quiet and very calm and he normally sits in the back in the shadows and just lets everyone else do their thing, lets other people be the centre of attention. And it's such an odd dichotomy because it seems so easy that he captivates and garners people's attention and interest. Whenever he speaks, everyone wants to listen, wants to hear him, but actually his default character is of a quiet person that sits at the back um, and he likes to listen to others, he likes to observe others. He has a great enthusiasm and interest in what other people are doing, which is quite remarkable and you don't see this on screen because he's there to give his wisdom. When you meet him in person, he likes other people to be the centre of attention. He likes to just help out, it's very humble in, in that sense and it's very interesting. So that is something I've learned from him. Even when I give these videos and I do interviews with people, I like to slow down. That's one thing I've learned. And I don't need to blurt out my words as soon as they come to mind. I can think about them and a pause is okay. I've heard him pause for 10 seconds, probably longer. And I never question, oh, this is a long pause. He might not know what he's saying. I know he's thinking about what he's about to say. I know that the answer he gives you is well thought out and genuine, rather than people just saying stuff to fit into the conversation. He owns the conversation. So that's the second thing I learned from him. Think before you speak. And the third thing that I learned from Xi Heng Ye, um, and this is the thing that changed my life the most, is it's about expectations. And he said it to me in a talk that's on YouTube, but he said, 
person who is closest to you, the person who's in your life most, the person who understands you the most and you understand the most. He asked me if they surprise me sometimes and I said yes. He says, do they meet expectations all the time? I said, no, they don't. Sometimes they do things that I do not expect. And he says, okay, so the people a bit further out, maybe colleagues, um, these people will probably surprise you more. I said, yes, that's true. And he says, now random strangers, um, and I, I understood his point that you can't hold expectations for these things because they will never be met. People, the world is chaos. It's hectic out there and you can never expect these things. And if you try to expect things, you have expectations, then um, they won't be met and then you'll be left um, feeling unsatisfied, annoyed, irritated. So just let these things be. As the Stoics say, Amor Fate, love your fate. You can't expect things to go a certain way, trying to put people in a path. They just flow in and out and you have to just accept that and embrace that. That's the way life happens. So I said there's three things I learned from Master. But there's actually a fourth thing and that's like a bonus teaching that I'll share at the end. But I'd just like to sum up his character with a quote from this Winnie the Pooh book. So. By the time it came to the edge of the forest, the stream had grown up, so that it was almost a river, and being grown up, it did not run and jump and sparkle along as it used to when it was younger, but moved more slowly, for it knew now where it was going, and it said to itself, there is no hurry, we shall get there some day. Winnie the Pooh. What I mean by this, is that he does seem like the river. He's just flowing. He's not in a rush to get anywhere. It's like he knows where he is right now is where he's meant to be and where he's going. He will arrive when he gets there. So there's no need to worry about getting there. There's no rush. There's no hesitation. There's no an anxiousness. There's no need or want or greed or desire. He's just going and everything seems to fall into place as he planned. That's from my perspective, looking at him. Remember, memento mori. The time we have here is limited. Time is finite and we can't waste it. So be present. Be grateful for the time you have right now. Like I say, I like to use this calendar. Uh, you fill in a square each week and that is a week of your life past. It seems very morbid, and I understand why people have this knee-jerk reaction to not want to use a poster like this. But I can say, from personal experience and people who have used this poster, that it adds so much zest for life, so much gratitude and presence to your life. It is one of the most powerful tools I've ever used. And just understanding this mortality, that when we fill in one of these squares, when a black square is filled, you realize that a week has passed of your life that you can't retrieve. And you can analyze and assess the week that has passed, what things you did right, what you could have done better, what you did wrong, what you was grateful for. And then it sets you up for the next week. The only time you have is that unfilled white square. So what's the thing I learned from Master Xiang Yi, the final bonus teaching? It was, tea. He, I've learned so much about tea. He actually spoke about tea for hours and it was full of wisdom, surprisingly, not surprisingly. It's full of wisdom, but actually I've gained a great liking for tea. I drink different teas now. Of course, I'm British, so I drink tea. We love tea. Bit of, you know, Yorkshire tea bag, bit of sugar, bit of milk. Very nice. But I'm talking about these teas like oolong, um, Sirlon, um, jasmine, black, white, all these beautiful teas and so much varieties. It's not just oolong, it's hundreds of varieties of oolong. And we got to try them all out, but um, that's something I brought home. He, ga he gave me lots of teas and I brought them home. And there's so much wisdom to be found in the ceremony of drinking tea that I'll let you research yourself. So if you made it this far into the video, I want you to comment tea, T-E-A. I know what you mean and I know that you paid so much attention to the whole video. I'm actually surprised 
by how many of you made it to the end of the last video. Um, I'm very impressed and I know it's like on a total views it's like 0.01% of people actually make it that far um, but it's quite incredible that there is a small percentage of people that pay that much attention to the video and make it that far and hopefully if you're one of the people that are commenting to hopefully these videos bring you value uh, then if you're paying this much attention I only assume you're enjoying it and it is bringing you value so I'm happy for that so I just want to say a big thank you to the YouTube members. Um, the support is incredible and it just helps me do what I'm doing. It makes it um, a better experience for you guys and a better experience for me on a selfish level. It makes what I do a bit easier, a bit more relaxing and it means I can do more of what I do and have more time and enthusiasm for what I get to do, which is incredible. But I'm also grateful for the subscribers and the people commenting, the people sharing these videos, to the followers on Instagram at the Everyday Stoke, to my followers on Instagram at William Mulligan and brother at William Mulligan brother. So thank you very much. And if you want to support what I'm doing, then please consider becoming a YouTube member. There is YouTube perks um, that you may enjoy, and buying that poster does support what I'm doing and you can get 10% off with code memento mori which is a latin phrase that means remember death remember you're mortal I know it sounds morbid but like I've explained it's not I promise you so that helps support what I'm doing and I think that will help your life so thank you and I hope you have a great day